How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to look at all the DVDs and Blu-rays I bought during the month of June. And I don't know what it is about June. I, maybe I just happened to find a whole lot of good deals. It's just I set the new things aside as I buy them so I don't get them mixed up with other stuff. And it got to the end of the month and I realized I bought way too many things. Uh, there are 32 items in here, which is too many. I need to work on controlling myself. Uh, but I guess I just got lucky and found all this cool stuff. But 32 items and because a lot of them actually I do have a fair bit of multi-packs, there's over 100 movies in here. So. I got I got my work cut out for me. I need to I need to watch a bunch of this stuff. But anyway, um, this might be a bit longer of a video than I normally do because this is one of my biggest hauls. Again, have to control myself in the future. But without further ado, let's switch to the close-up camera and take a look at the June haul. All right, here we are inside the castle, taking a look at all the DVDs and Blu-rays I bought in June. And, yeah, there is uh, quite a bit this time around, so I'm going to try to go a little faster than normal. But let's open up with one of my more exciting finds, and that is The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises on Blu-ray. I've, of course, seen these movies a few times, uh, especially Dark Knight. It's a pretty good Batman movie. Uh, Batman Begins, obviously, changing things to the more realistic approach. I mean, I am more of a fan of the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton, more cartoony Batman. These are good, though, but yeah, not exactly my, my favorites. Uh, but why I didn't have these, I had seen The Dark Knight in clearance Blu-ray so many times because they printed so many copies of this film but I hadn't seen it with the slipcase before so I found it in the clearance bin both of these are only like three dollars each but here's what I like the slipcase for the Dark Knight you need the slipcase because the slipcase is Batman the blu-ray is Joker and if we flip to the back the Joker's got a hold of the the blu-ray and he's drawn all over it so the slipcase is the clean version of the cover and the back, the Joker's drawn all over it. And so many times I see this without its slipcase, and in turn you just get the vandalized version. You really do need to have both so the gag of removing the slipcase works, you know? So it's one of those that I hadn't bought for a while just because of that. I still need to get Batman Begins, but I, uh, <laughs> I hadn't seen it with its slipcase yet. Uh, so I hadn't got it yet. But anyway, there's the Blu-ray, the special features, and the digital copy. For Dark Knight Rises, the third film, which, yeah, is a little disappointing, but not terrible. Um, we do have a motion lynchal cover where Batman looks 3D right there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, not as fun as the Joker gag last time, but still worth having. And the back... Over three hours of bonus features and crack it open, Blu-ray, Blu-ray special features, and DVD. I'd much rather have a DVD than a digital copy, so I'm glad I got the DVD there. Again, they printed so many copies of The Dark Knight, I'm sure I can find a loose DVD to put in a little paper case and slide in there. I did get one more Blu-ray on clearance, not as big of a deal, but... Uh, Nothing to Fear, uh, inspired by the legend of Skull, Kansas. Crack it open, and it is a combo pack, but the DVD is missing its art. And flip it to the back. Uh, when Wendy and her husband Dan uh, and their kids have just moved to a small town, Skull, Kansas, where he's the new pastor, a community of friendly neighbors and a horrific series of occurrences await them. Uh, yeah. I don't know much about this movie, but hey, three bucks? Yeah, I'll pick it up. I'll check it out. I'll see what's up. Uh, anyway, after that, a bigger movie, My Neighbor Totoro. For the last three months or so, I've been buying up a few of these Studio Ghibli films. 
I've been a little picky because I want them all in these matching Blu-ray releases and I want them all to have their slip cases as well so that they'll look really nice on their shelf. Uh, Walmart got in My Neighbor Totoro again. Walmart has kind of a random selection of Ghibli films then sometimes they disappear and reappear but Totoro is back. I picked it up. It's probably Ghibli's most famous film. I mean, look at the top. He is the mascot. Um, it looked a little more cartoony and kid-friendly, so I wasn't as excited to see it as I was about like the other ones I picked up, like Howl's Moving Castle or Nausicaa or something. Uh, but I, I am curious what this is like, so definitely curious about it. Uh, slide it open. There's the back. And I really do like they take the effort to put on some art here so there's the blu-rays image and the DVD has its own unique image and there's a little landscape behind them and the ad for more Ghibli films but glad to have that glad to add it to the collection up next uh, on the channel uh, Sharks of Summer is going on right now so I'm always trying to stock up on a few more shark movies and now we have 47 meters down uncaged this is the sequel to 47 meters down uh, directed by Johannes Roberts who I believe did the first one as well uh, but this one uh, was a lot more goofy and silly personally as a goofy and silly film I really liked it but I know that people who like the serious nature of the first one absolutely hated this film but as a pretty good dumb shark movie I definitely liked it and I'm glad to finally pick this one up, open it up. We do have Blu-ray and DVD here. I really do like having them both. Now, these next four I picked up on an online order. And if you guys know me, I like to try to get stuff in brick and mortar stores. I really want to support brick and mortar businesses. And I don't order stuff online unless I'm absolutely certain I'll never find it in stores. So all these stuff are things that I've looked for in stores for over a year and never found. And I really wanted, so I did kind of like my rare once in a blue moon online order. Uh, but this first one, and the first three of these are Junji Ito, but uh, Yuzumaki, an adaptation of Junji Ito's classic manga. Um... A town gets infested with spirals and people start meeting strange spiral-like fates. This is a, well, it's based on a comic, so the imagery in here is really weird and surreal, and it's pretty cool. If you guys read the comic, it basically adapts the first two chapters with little bits and pieces of the first half of the comic sprinkled throughout to get you some of those visuals. Overall, I think this is actually considered one of the better Junji Ito adaptations. And I thought it was pretty fun. So, yeah, definitely would recommend this one. The comic's obviously better, but still, they did a pretty good job with it. I do also like the slipcase has rounded corners that match the Blu-ray. Uh, that's pretty cool. Slide it out, this actually has reversible cover art. And whenever there's a slipcase, I always turn it to the B cover art so that when you open it up, you get the experience of looking at both covers. And crack it open there's the disc there so yeah Yuzumaki definitely a great over-the-top surrealist uh, Japanese horror this is the same guy that directed Junji Ito's Long Dream which is a TV movie also really good check it out after that a little more on the obscure side I have Love Ghost this is based on the Junji Ito comic Love Sickness that's how it was translated in the States and this one doesn't get talked about too terribly much. Love Sickness was a, a pretty good story, not my favorite Junji Ito, but knowing that there's a movie about it, I really am curious to see how it holds up. So I haven't watched this one yet, but I really do want to. So hopefully I'll get to re reviewing this pretty soon. This is actually uh, Tokyo Shock, which I see their stuff in stores all the time, so I'm really surprised that I never found this one but it wasn't too terribly expensive so I was really glad to add that to the order we get the disc there and then we get like their mailer asking for information and then the media blasters catalog uh, but yeah if you guys read love sickness and seen the movie let me know how good it is but I'll definitely check it out soon 
the next one is a really big one. I spent probably a little too much money on this, but it is five movies, and that is the Tomie collection of the first five Tomie movies. I already have six and seven, so now I have all of them that are released in the States. Sadly, uh, eight and nine never came over here, so have to catch those streaming, I guess. But yeah, Tomie is Junji Ito's most iconic and well-known character, made into a series of movies. And even though this is not cheap on the internet, the fact that it has five and that the individual releases, none of them are cheap, definitely the best way to go for saving money is to to get them all in one go. Because, like, again, price is subject to change, and this is just what I found at the time of recording. But I think just Tomie 1 was going for, like, 40 bucks on Amazon. So, yeah, good to just grab them all up. And it's uh, one of those 1.5 uh, thickness in the cases. So it is thicker, but sadly, it did get damaged during transport. Now, I, I know several uh, places I can get a new case for this. So I'm going to have to find a 1.5 thick case uh, that holds five discs, uh, which will be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it shouldn't be that hard. But I will have to replace the case. But we see the front is actually images from the comic the side is stills from the movie and the back is all the information on the first five movies we crack it open and we get the first disc there Tomie and then we get a little book and sadly this hinge at the bottom is also damaged uh, but two three four and five so each movie does get its own disc yeah, I need to replace this case. But anyway, slide it in, and that is the first five Tomie movies. I cannot wait to just crack into that series. The last thing I ordered online was not Junji Ito, but Wreck 4 Apocalypse. Oh man, I've been looking for this movie forever. I even have the very rare Quarantine 2, so this is the last one I needed. And apparently this is... Uh, yeah, this is the end, and it, you know, f fills in the the ending of Wreck 2, and apparently they're on a ship. I am really excited to watch this. I, I'm going to do a whole big thing on all the Wreck movies pretty soon, but glad to grab the last one. But anyway, if you're wondering why this is rare in brick-and-mortar shops, crack it open, pretty plain white disc, but then we take it out. It's going to be shiny, but it is... Print, I don't know if you see, this is blue. Uh, blue means that it was a DVD-R, so this was essentially print-on-demand. I mean, it's a foreign film coming to the States, and it's part four. So yeah, not the biggest market in America. I, I, wish, I wish it was bigger, but um, yeah, so this was print-on-demand through the internet, which means that in brick-and-mortar stores, there's not that many copies of it. Which means, yeah, I, this DVD that I, I got in the mail was the first time I had ever seen it on DVD. So, glad to pick it up, and now I have all the Rex slash quarantine movies. That's pretty cool. So, these four are the online order, moving into DVDs regular, and of course, starting off with the shutter section. And some pretty good stuff. First off, Skinamarink. I heard so much about this. I was really waiting for it to come out, and I'm glad that I have it. Um, so what it sounds like it is, is two kids left alone in a haunted house, but it's really artsy and atmospheric, and a lot of the shots are like pulled out wides, and it's really dark and hard to see. Uh, they say that it's good and atmospheric, but not for everyone, so really interested in checking it out, and I'm glad that it's finally on disc here. Uh, so you may note, this has the Shutter original band on the top. These next two don't have the band, but if you go to the bottom, they are Shutter movies, and I can see why they wouldn't necessarily want to put their name on this one. Uh, Children of the Corn, the second remake, I believe. Again, not seen it yet, but this is pretty notorious on the internet. A lot of people say this is horrible. Children of the Corn is one of those things that I'm going to have to crack open eventually. There's like 10 of them, I think. 
it's going to be a doozy, but uh, I do have this one uh, now, so we're going to have to watch it eventually. But yeah, I think second remake. It came out a few years, well, it was done a few years ago, but they never released it up until just recently, so it sh sat on a shelf for a while. The last Shudder movie, something I'm much more excited for, uh, Kids vs. Aliens. This came out a bit ago. It took me a few weeks to buy it because I just saw it on Walmart and I'm like, this looks like just a Stranger Things knockoff. It didn't really sell me. The fact that the Shudder logo is hidden on the back and not prominent across the top, that would have drawn me in knowing it's a Shudder movie. Uh, but what also would have drawn me in is if it said on the front, uh, this is actually a remake, an extended remake of Slumber Party Kids, uh, Slumber Party Alien Abduction, which was the segment from VHS 2. So this is a segment from VHS 2, redone as a whole movie, and that's pretty cool. I, I watched the first two VHS movies for the channel recently. I'm still looking for a DVD copy of Viral, but yeah, I need to... I need to watch this and see what the full movie's like. That sounds pretty fun, and I'll probably get to this soon. It does have reversible cover art, so take the slipcase off and I flipped it around because I like to see both of them, you know? And then there's the disc and the A cover there. So anyway, those three were my Shudder movies, but we still got a ways to go. All right, starting off, we have another shark movie. Again, as I say, try to stock up for Sharks of Summer. This one's called Raging Sharks. Flip it to the back, we get little circles of our stars there. Uh, but it talks about how they're in an underwater lab, it sounds like Deep Blue Sea, and there's a strange vibration which is drawing all the sharks. And are these two characters supposed to be aliens? I, I don't know. In these waters, man is the only prey. But yeah, sounds like a good fun shark movie. Definitely trying to add more to the collection because when I do Sharks of Summer, yeah, doing a shark movie a week, I do start to eat through a lot of them and I, I need to have them stocked up. So that's Raging Sharks. After that, we get the movie You Are Not My Mother from a Magnet there. And uh, this movie, flip it to the back, it talks about how there's this kid and her mother goes missing and when she comes back, she seems strange and different and off, hence the title, You Are Not My Mother. And it says that this movie takes place one week before Halloween. If you guys have seen it, how much of a Halloween movie is it? Should I save this for my Halloween marathon? I I'm thinking so. Anyway, disc is the same as the front. Uh, but yeah, I found this for relatively cheap. I thought, why not pick it up? It sounds interesting. Uh, next, I mentioned I'm on a bit of a found footage kick uh, with the VHS and Rec movies here. Uh, so I picked up The Gallows Act 2. I think I was kind of a weird guy that I actually liked The Gallows Act 1 pretty well. Um, I, it may just be that I was a little bit of a theater kid on the tech side building the stages and stuff. And I thought the first Gallows was pretty fun, but that being said, years and years later, Act 2 came out, and it's just one of those things in the back of my head, I'm like, that's gonna suck. A belated sequel to a not well-received found footage horror movie? I don't know if it does, because I, I never even watched reviews for it. But getting back on the found footage train, starting to watch more and more of them, I'm like, you know, let's pick this up and, and finally see if it is good or not, you know? I mean, like I said, I did think the first one was pretty fun, so let's see what the second one has in store, and maybe in a few more years we'll get the Act 3 or something. But anyway, there's Gallows Act 2. Uh, up next, I think this is an 80s movie, uh, Madhouse, and we flip it to the back, it talks about there's this girl, and she has an evil twin, who escapes from the asylum and starts killing all her friends. Gotta love a good evil twin movie. Plus, this says that it was inspired by Giallo, so hopefully some pretty good visuals there. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing 
what this one was about. Again, I found it for not too terribly expensive. Dark Sky Films usually has some pretty good releases. And yeah, sounded, sounded pretty cool there. So that is Madhouse. Moving along, we have another uh, Jean Roland film, a uh, French director. This is Shivers of the Vampire, and I did have to move the price tag to censor the butt on the cover. Um, but basically, a young, newlywed couple, and the vampires start to seduce the, uh, the bride there. So, sounds interesting. I have a few of this redemption line. Uh, seems like pretty cool extreme European films, and I'll probably watch a whole bunch of them together when I get to making reviews for them. Wow, the castle's getting full. Let's go. Let's go quick. Uh, head trauma. We get uh, what is this? Yeah, uh, one of those smaller DVD companies. And it says uh, there's this guy and his grandmother's house is abandoned, about to be condemned. And he's going down there to renovate it, but he's getting played by strange visions in the night. Sounds pretty cool. Again, have to check that out. Very minimal DVD, but we do get a fun little booklet over here. Yeah, if you guys have seen it, let me know if it's good. Anyway, after that... Alien Invasion. This is one that I saw at Walmart in a clear alien knockoff, but there was something about it where I was like, oh, I should pick that up. I want to watch it. I'm like, why do I want to watch that? It looks so bad, but I eventually did get it, so we'll have to see how much of a knockoff it is and, and if it's any good. This is the Devil Works put this one out, and the disc is the same as the front nothing on the back and you got a clear case so just big white blankness uh, anyway after that here's a film that I found for just a dollar in a random used movie shop and that is Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito and twins I've heard a lot of people make reference to this movie saying it was really weird and out there and when I saw it for just a dollar in my local used movie shop I thought hey Let's pick that one up and see what's up with that. Um, I think Arnold is probably the best action star. So, uh, trying to kind of pick up his movies as I go. But yeah, it's something like their science experiments. And they gave Arnold all the, the positive DNA that they thought. And they gave Danny DeVito all what they perceived as the negative traits. So they're, they're twins, but they're completely different looking people. Um, anyway... Uh, after that, we have the TV section. All right, well, the castle is getting fuller, but let's go on. Um, first TV show, I, I have two seasons of different shows, uh, but The River. The River, I heard of it when it first came out. Never got a chance to watch it back then, but I'd been kind of in the back of my head that I need to check it out someday. This says complete first season. I think it only ran one season. But this is found footage as a TV show. Some people going down a river, and I think they find, like, creepy dolls and stuff hanging from trees, and eventually, I don't know, ghost or something show up. Uh, from the director of Paranormal Activity, yeah, the guy that made Paranormal Activity got to make a found footage TV show. And then this is just kind of a rare, fun thing. It's found footage, but it's also TV. That's pretty cool. Uh, flip it to the back, we get a few... Uh, images. Oh yeah, also executive producer Steven Spielberg. Uh, but anyway, crack it open and we get this flipper case. Uh, only eight episodes in this season, but we do get to see the uh, wide portrait of the group on the coast behind them. So looking forward to this one, hoping it's, uh, it's good and also hoping it's not a cliffhanger because I mean it is a one season show. After that, I did get another one of these X-Files bricks. I'm going to eventually have to do a complete series uh, back-to-front watch of X-Files because, you know, like a lot of people, I saw episodes here and there from when it was first on TV. Uh, but I'm trying to grab up all these things. As I said, these are super thick bricks. Uh, but the thing is, there's the thick brick version and then there's the harder to find newer releases and I think the thick bricks are more impressive and I, I just I want to have 
all the seasons in a uniform fashion. Uh, but now that I have two, I have seasons one, two, and three. So I at least, uh, you know, I have the first three and I can begin my watch even if I can't find the rest yet. But I'm, I'm going to be getting these as I find them. These things are pretty thick, but you know, you have to, there's the two and it unfolds and you get the episode listing in the middle and then you have to kind of unfold and then unfold one more time and there's a whole bunch of discs but when this thing is fully open it's too wide to even see on the camera but anyway X-Files classic show got to got to get all these so I think the original series was at nine nine seasons so I have a third of it now and then I need the movies uh, but anyway after this let's move on to multi-movie packs and we're starting off with uh, two double packs. I got a Troma sci-fi double feature featuring Cybernator and the Digital Prophet with Jeffrey Combs. Seems like some fun B sci-fi movies and I do collect Troma movies. They're on the shelf behind me when you see me talking and yeah I have about a, a full shelf and maybe a quarter of Troma movies and I'm always looking to collect more. They did put out a ton of stuff and they're they're usually really good cheesy things. Uh, this says volume one but I think they only made one of these. Uh, flip it to the back for some more information and these things are both on one disc there. Anyway, another double pack. We have Elvira's Movie Macabre. This is actually put out by Shout Factory and this does feature the full versions of the movies, plus Elvira coming in and making jokes every so often. I have all the rest of this release. There are several different Elvira releases, but these Shout Factory double features, I think there are six total of them, and this was the last one I needed, so glad to grab it up, and I now have the complete set. Anyway, crack it open, we get the note from Elvira, and this is printed, it's not her, it's, it, she signed it, but then they scanned it into the computer, so this isn't an original signature, right? Uh, but anyway, we get Legacy of Blood, and we get The Devil's Wedding Night. Each one gets their own disc. Anyway, after that, this is what, I mean, this is already a big haul, but this is what really boosts this episode's numbers. I got the excellent 80s 50 movie pack. This company, Mill Creek, they put out a lot. If you see a 50 movie pack, 99% of the time it's probably going to be them. But yeah, a whole bunch of films from the 80s. I think I saw this for only six bucks, which is a little over a dollar for 10 films. So a little over 10 cents per film. Yeah, I couldn't resist. A lot of times you see these, they're like 15 bucks, which is, is fair as well. But for six, yeah, no, I, I had to grab it. And again, they're probably, a lot of them aren't great, but I had to check it out. And you get some, some crazy movie titles. My Mom's a Werewolf, Night of the Sharks. There's a lot of stuff. Over 70 hours of the best of the 80s. Maybe not the best, but over 70 hours. And lots and lots of movies in here. This is a 12 disc set. What, yeah, 12 disc, um, they're gonna be crowded, but we get these, you know, sort of paper cases. They're all stacked up and clamped in here, but we can see this first disc has four movies on it, but I really do like they give us this very informative book, which, you know, you get the disc, and then the movies on that disc, the year, who's it starring, it's a lot of useful information and little plot summaries. Bailout has David Hasselhoff in it. That's cool. And Linda Blair. But yeah, you can flip through and see all the information for the movies. And then if you go to the back, it actually has the movies listed in alphabetical order so that you can, you know, okay, I want to find this movie Bailout. It's on disc three. So that's pretty useful as well. But we get an ad at the end, they have the Fabulous 40s, 
the nifty 50s, the sensational 60s, the swingin' 70s, and then excellent 80s. So if I wanted to, I could get four more of these and have a grand total of 250 movies. Maybe if I see them. That's, that's quite a lot. It, just this one is already a lot. And I do have, not the decade collections, but I do have a couple more of their 50 movie packs. And maybe just someday sit down and spend all that time watching them. I don't know. All right, one more in this current section. Uh, we have American Horror Stories. Uh, sometimes you'll get a knockoff, uh, sort of a mockbuster type deal where it's the pack is trying to be a mockbuster. For example, I, I have this pack that's the Stranger Things uh, pack, you know, that's kind of trying to knock off Stranger Things. So it's not the movies that are a mockbuster but it's the the package that is and here we get eight American horror stories uh, when we get this vampire with horns I'm not sure what she's supposed to be uh, but then she's over here in this little portrait at the top and the movies on the back secrets of the clown uh, which I have in another pack uh, killjoy one and two from full moon the devil's daughter uh, the devil's hand Witchcraft 13, which I looked it up, and there are actually at least 12 other witchcraft movies, so that will be something to unpack when I get there. The Dead Sleep, Blackwood's Bud Bloodbath, The Curse of Black Hodag, and we crack it open, and all eight movies are on two discs, so we are pretty crowded in there as well. Uh, the next one actually can kind of serve as a transition piece. My last segment is movie trading company dollar bin movies, but the first one is actually a multi-pack as well, so kind of belongs in both camps, and that is Vampires and More 20 Movies. Yeah, flip it to the back and we get to see, yeah, Vampires and More, like Nosferatu, that's a vampire Oasis of the Zombies and Night of the Living Dead, those are zombies. Uh, but we get several movies in here. Last Man on Earth, that's a classic, but it's in everything. Voodoo, Black Exorcist, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. Yeah, quite, quite the pack, but not exclusively vampires. Rated M for mature audiences. And if we crack it open, we get a four-disc collection for uh, 20 five movies on each disc but hey for a dollar couldn't pass it up and that's why just this little stack of movies off to the side 58 and 20 that is 78 movies right here in the palm of my hand wow it's crazy uh, the other on the dollar section we actually have a full moon movie uh, time slingers and this is actually still in its pa uh, plastic that's great that means it's brand new Two Worlds Will Collide, so a full moon sci-fi movie, and boy, their version of Chewbacca is pretty pretty strange looking, but he's in four out of the six of these photos, so I guess he's a selling point. If you guys keep up with numbers, this is full moon number 136. Anyway, we go from full moon to the asylum with this movie, Blood. Always got to collect Asylum movies. A lot of the ones I've covered on here are shark movies, but I do need to branch out. They have some found footage ones, not this one, but uh, they say if you like Dead Ringers, you'll like Blood. And it talks about how there's this girl, she's very beautiful, her blood has a mutation that makes it kind of like a drug. That's interesting. I'll have to check it out. Crack it open. Disc is the same as the front. Anyway, uh, after that, we have Lethal Target, which looks kind of like an alien or predator movie, and it talks about how this takes place in the future year of 2069, so I kind of wonder what movie this is. For mature audiences, 2069, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, crack it open, and the disc is actually this really cool uh, black and green lizard eye there. So. Probably a Predator-style movie. Looking forward to that. Then after that, we get this movie called Sight. 
and it talks about how there's this guy and he has the gift to see visions and he meets a girl that can see stuff too and he's like finally someone else I thought I was going crazy but of course it says peace is short-lived and this is from Lionsgate and after this we have one more movie and then we're done with this giant crazy haul and that's The Dreaming for just a dollar as well a burial ground is unearthed, a girl dies, an agent curse lives on, and then there are the dreams, or nightmares, or premonitions. So, have to check this one out. Crack it open, disc is the same as the front, but gotta love good dreaming horror movies. Alright, so there we are at the end to probably my largest DVD and Blu-ray haul for a month. I don't know what it is. I guess I'm just going crazy. I'll try to be a little bit more reserved and not grab quite so many in the future because, yeah, I should be more responsible with my money. But there are 32 things in here, 32 individual items, but multi-pack, 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 multi-pack. Uh, this actually comes out to... Whew, 114 movies and two seasons of TV shows. That is okay. I gotta, I gotta, man. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta be more careful. Oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So hope you guys enjoy this. Tell me if there's any that I haven't reviewed yet that you think I need to rush out and get a review of. If there's any that you've seen, feel free to tell me what are good, what are bad, and. Uh, yeah, I hope this wasn't too terribly long. Feel free to pause me and come back. Well, actually, it's too late in the video to say that. Okay, well, anyway, uh, if you guys, even though this is really long, if you haven't gotten enough of this, I'm going to put a playlist at the bottom, which will be my past monthly movie hauls. I've been doing this since uh, my haul for last October, so there's quite a bit of that. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom, monthly movie haul playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.